Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo guide on the Pit of Heresy, Destiny 2's new dungeon. Now this came in with Shadowkeep and, well, since there's triumphs for doing it solo, and it can be done solo, I decided to make a guide on it. As you guys probably know, that's kind of what I do with anything that can be soloed. This is Shadowkeep's version of the Shard Throne. And to give you guys some sort of idea about the difference, it took me three days, I think, to learn the solo for the Shattered Throne. The first day I attempted this, I beat it twice. So I think this is actually a little bit more simple and straightforward than the Shattered Throne. Now I've decided to go the whole thing without using the Recluse and the Mountaintop. If you have those things, definitely use them. They are, they have a place, especially at the boss. But I've decided to go with weapons I think are a little less exclusive. Although some people may argue, especially with the changes or the the bug to the Izanagi quest. I am going to use the Izanagi at the boss, but for just about the whole thing, right up to the boss, I'm going to be using the Jotun. I'm going to be using the Long Shadow, the Vanguard Sniper, and I'm going to be using 21% Delirium. Now, I've been using the 21% for quite a while. I do enjoy the weapon. It's been out a long time. If you don't have it, I would definitely recommend starting it, even if it's just incrementing it every time, every week when you're going to Gambit. So, this is where the thing starts really. Now in this area, the first area, the necropolis, what you're going to have is six towers. One of them is where you want to start, as you can see. I call that, I've got my own names for them all, that's the turret, because it kind of looks like a turret to me. You want to go to A. Now in A, you're going to have a pit keeper. You'll have one of those at each tower, each tower with a, a symbol above it, six symbols. You've got to kill the pit keeper to open up the doorway which will let you either go in and fight one of the three bosses or for this one just I think this just activates the sword knights and you go in here you'll kill the sword knight normally and he'll drop a sword which the sword is what you use to do, do damage to the three bosses now the way you damage the bosses is the exact same as the boss so you kind of learn those mechanics here so basically Enemies in this area really want to be careful about, and as you can see, I'm kind of looking for them. these guys. If you're within range, the, the kill time is really quick. So there's about uh, five, four, five, maybe six. There might be six. There might be one for each door. So as you can see, I'm just going to clear this area real quick with a Nova. I am on the Warlock. I do plan on doing a Hunter and a Titan run on this because this is my sort of thing. This is what I like. I, I'm not really a raid challenge guy because, well, you either have to rely on luck or a glitch or something. I don't really do that. I do something that everybody can do. I find ways to do stuff that everyone can do. Now, some people have argued in the past that it takes a certain skill level. Well, you don't you don't gain those skill levels unless you try. So as you can see, once you kill, once you kill the pit keeper, the door opens, kill all the adds, you go in, kill the sword knight, and you'll see those three symbols above it on the back wall. That's the locations of the bosses. So again, I have my own names for these. So I think one of them looks like a turret, which is where we're going now. One of them looks like a burger. I've I, I kind of chopped and changed. The other one I call, I don't know why, it just looks like a sandwich to me. Then there's the Vex head, and then there's the spike, the one with all the spikes coming off it. It actually, to start with, reminded me of, you know, what they try to say that was the Shrieker. Would that be the Shrieker all the time? But it looks like they change, they change locations every time you come in. So I move very kind of, I know there's an ogre here somewhere, there always is. There's, there's nearly always an ogre, where, wherever you're going there'll be an ogre. And I think about here, I'll just sword back, I think, it seems to me, and when you guys go in, you, you, you'll you find out for yourself, I know he's around here somewhere, I'll just, if you ever charge a grenade on the warlock and you want to, you want to cancel out of it, just change weapon, there he is, he was right below me, so... I'll just come back a bit, charge a grenade, throw it on him. You can see how much, how fast he, he'll kill you. And once the grenade, once I start getting yellow numbers, you can see the grenade almost kills him. A friend of mine was telling me he went into the Leviathan and at the dog section of the Leviathan, one charge grenade kills a dog. <laughs> That's how powerful these things are, although that is, 
year one content, but still pretty powerful. So the other noteworthy thing is at each side you're going to have these ads. Clear the ads. This isn't a speed run. This is a repeatable strategy that will help you beat it every time. Clear. As you can see, you don't really need to do this on a warlock, although I've said this before. The way Bungie set up the seasonal artifact and those kind of uh, those perks you get, warlock grenades, along with hunter grenades are pretty strong, titan grenades are pretty strong, but the warlock has something a little bit different. It has that charged grenade, and that is just mad. So this is the first boss we're going to be facing, first mini boss. Now each each area going to have their ads. So this knight, he's going to have tons of thrall. So I I don't really want to be engaging him without. Uh, with Thrall still attacking. So you can only take these ads down, these mini bosses, with a sword. So as you can as you remember, I took the, the knight out in the first. This is what happens when you take him out. Knights will just appear now. If you ever lose your sword, it's no big deal if you lose your sword. Because if you go to the nearest kind of pathway, a, a, a sword knight will appear. It's The game has been set up, so the, this, this encounter has been set up. This area has been set up that you can get your swords back really quick if you, you lose them. So don't worry about the sword. The sword's really good for movement, in my opinion, but that's why I use it in between the bosses. So this boss, what I'm going to do is block, hit, hit. Block, hit, hit. Now I'm going to, and what I'm trying to do now, because that thrall is staying so close to him, that is why you take out all the thrall. So I'm just blocking continuously until I get health back. So you just block, hit, hit, block straight away. Two hits and a block. Now you can see I've got a super. And when, when he gets a little bit lower, I'm going to hit him with the super. Which now, So the, the, the attack I'm doing with the sword here is right shoulder. It's all one. Uh, this, the super is the exact same as your super. Both shoulders together. Now as you've seen, when I killed him, one of those sigils at the back, one of those symbols disappeared. So we're left with burger and I think... You're going to call it whatever you're going to call it, right? That looks like a burger to me. So you're going to kill burger and sandwich now, right? Or a flying saucer. It looked like, kind of looked like a spaceship to me as well. So I'm looking for flying saucer at the moment. I think it was right below me. I think it's behind me. So we're just looking. That one over there looks like a vex head all the way over at the other side. So I'm just just killing. I think, I think, it was, I think it's be below turret. There we go. I'm just taking out some of these ads because the ads, some of the ads will reappear. Ads that reappear that are uh, like sword knights and, and uh, elite snipers. They, if you get out of their vicinity, they'll they'll disappear. And as I say, you've got to be careful for these ogres. That's why I'm very kind of cagey when I'm when I'm moving from area to area. I believe it's better to be. Uh, it's better to be careful than quick. Once, once I've got a better understanding of this area, because there, there will be faster ways to do it. I found a really fast way, the, 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 the tunnel section with the unkillable ogres, I found a really fast way to do that. I think, I think I've done that in about five or six minutes. So it's, it, that is quite a quick way. And that's the other reason why I'm so kind of cagey about moving between areas is this. Ads can just reappear. There's the sword knight. Ads can just reappear. You see that boomer knight that's hitting us? He, he's just... And these ads here, they're just random spawn ads. They just spawn in on their own. And if you move out of their area, they'll despawn as well. So you've got to be pretty careful. And there's another sword knight just spawned behind me. You've got to be careful moving between areas. So... Now, now we're in here. This is we want to despawn this knight. I could kill him, but we want to despawn him. So I'm just trying to get out of his way. There we go. He's despawned. So this is the next boss. Right. Now this one has got two ogres. That's that's its kind of protectors. So we're going to take out the ogres first. Now you can just go for. As you can see, I couldn't find the second ogre uh, immediately want to grab this before it despawns now what you do is block which is left trigger i think and aim your block as you can see i'm aiming back at the shrieker and it, it sends the shriekers 
death blasts back and as you can see it'll tell you a disciple of the broken blade falls we have one left so that's what these guys are called disciples it's three disciples here so there we go there's our sandwich flying saucer you'll have your own name so I'm just going to move between the areas I'm trying not to just land straight down on a platform because as you can see you've just got to be careful you really have to be careful the Jotun's really strong in these situations you know, if you if you were if you're on a hunt or you're on a, on a titan, they've got their own grenades which have their own abilities. The grenades for those guys, there's the pit keeper. They're very strong. You just have to. You know, I I know somebody will ask me in the comments, can it be done on other characters? Oh, of course it can. You know, I'm just using it. It's not. I'm using the wall up because I, I recognised when I first started setting up the characters. I recognized that the Warlock would be a very strong character because of the grenades, and I wasn't wrong. But I do, I'm going to be honest, I've really enjoyed using the Titan here as well. The Titan in Shadowkeep as well. So, for this section, you've got a wizard. So you have to utilize, we'll just take this last ad out, you have to utilize the, the sword's other main attack. Now, it operates very similar to another sword in Destiny. Basically, it fires a kind of kind of green kind of. It almost looks like the green kind of effect from the thorn, and maybe that's that's a hive damage type. I, we always used to say in D1 that would they bring more weapons in that had that same archetype of damage. Wasn't arc, wasn't solar, wasn't void. It was like a green stuff. Well, the swords are so it must be as you can see these hive these these. Uh, what are they called? A cured? Whatever those knights are called. I'm look. I'm even looking at it, and I can spell. <laughs> I can read. Uh, th those specific hive knights. They they come with all the like the the hive symbols all over them, and it's that green stuff. You can see that green kind of. It's very distinctive to the hive. Well, that is right trigger. That is the attack. Now it tracks. So you don't have to put yourself too much in harm's way. As long as you're close to the ad, or you can aim it in their direction, as you can see, you'll see more so in the boss fight. I kind of stay in cover and throw that attack around walls. Now, I've got my super, but I found that that that's a perfect example of it. You just need your, your right side to be shown. See how it tracked there? Perf perfect view. Perfect view of how it tracks. And you just keep firing your right trigger attack. Make sure that that at the you don't have to be facing you ha, you don't have to be put right in the way of that person that that enemy. You just have to make sure the attack can make it through. And that's this area done. Now that you've beat the three disciples, now you've got to go to the doorway. And you can see there that bright green light. That is the doorway. Now when you get to the doorway, there's one hand you need to kill. The pit keeper. Once you kill the pit keeper, you've cleared this section. You're through to the next section. Now there will be a, a ton of other ads, but I think you'll see. I'll kill the pit keeper pretty quickly. The ads will eventually despawn, but until they despawn, you know, you you, you kind of, especially when we go for the flawless, which you know I'm going to try and sort you guys out with the flawless. So there's the exit. There's the pit keeper. I'll throw a grenade just to weaken them. Super. And that is this area done. Now the ads will still try and attack once this area is cleared, but as soon as you get that new mission marker, even if you were to die here, you've already acquired. You, you would just it becomes a a free spawn area, so you would just spawn straight back in. Five second counter or whatever it is. So now we're going to head to the next area, which is the tunnels of despair. I think it's called. So. When you get to this area of walls, now there's a couple of different things here. Uh, there's some lore here which I'll put I'll put guides up for for the lore. Also, this is the, how you get this part of the next part of the Xenophage quest. But for for just because we're doing a guide on on the dungeon, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna confuse it with anything else. We're just gonna head down to the pits of despair, and I'm gonna show you guys a real quick method for beating it, a real quick route to take. So. I'll end this here, and I will speak to you guys in the next encounter.
here we are guys at the pits now the, these are the tunnels of despair or something like that basically what you've got is three tunnels patrolled by ogres that can't be killed in between those tunnels are little little pockets little entrances you can go through in four of them or four or five you have pockets of ads with kind of like a big yellow bar night they produce an orb you've got to pick the orb up and take it to the end of each of these tunnels to open up the doorway and that will complete this encounter once you've opened all three doors so if you take this route and the route kind of works out really simple it's very straightforward i think it took me like five minutes to do this five or six minutes so it's like up second left you grab the orb you go straight through you'll cross over take the next left which is just like a round tunnel that takes you back out on the same tunnel and the doorway is just in front of you that's the first exit now when, when well, that's the first doorway taken care of you have to be careful when you're in here because as you can see you're going to get a, a ton of thrall now these ogres they won't leave you they they, they, they they can't be killed you just have to wait for them to go so as you can see you can use the orb we're going to cross right over slide in right in here this tunnel just goes round in a half moon right round to the right brings you back out in the same tunnel now whatever tunnel that you open the door there's the doorway whatever tunnel you open there's three kind of sigils three uh markers whichever one leaves whichever one disappears that's the tunnel you're in if it's left right or middle right but if you follow this this route so it's you go up you take second left kill all the ads go straight through now you'll know which way straight through if you do lose your bearings it will be the the exit you haven't opened yet that's the best way to know where you are is you can't if you're trying to find the exit to somewhere and you're looking to go back out of a different from a different direction it will be the doorway you haven't opened yet so it will have that kind of hive uh cloth over it so if you just follow the, my route what i will do if if the route's kind of hard to follow and which looking at it it might be uh i will link in the description i will link a map to this now it was the map i used it's become kind of famous now but I, I worked out very quickly it was a pathway where you could you didn't really it was the most the fastest the most efficient so the entrance that you come in you're going to take the the next end the next as you can see i've opened that way so when you come in this is the way we came in when you come in you want to go straight over there you go there it is and you come out of here and we're just waiting to see where the ogre is and there's the doorway now what you i think this is right hand side we've done the middle then the right now we're going back in and we're going through to the left hand side so back the way we came we've got to be careful i think i get trapped in here by an ogre now those ogres you can't do any damage as i've said you just have to wait for them to leave the area i'm just waiting still waiting you'd think he'd have better things to do but he hasn't so we're waiting and when he goes we can go out and we can go out there he goes and we're going out we're going right and then we're going into the, what, what, the first one once we turn right we're going in first left which we've already been in so it's not this one <laughs> we're going to run past him and go next left it's second left when you come out of that tunnel you're going to go right and then take the second it'll be the one exactly what i just said it will be the exit that you haven't opened yet i went back into the exit i just came out of that's when i realized i was in the wrong place now this the reason i'm leaving left hand the left hand doorway uh till last is because there's a little bit of a jog you've got a little bit of a jog to get to get to the left hand doorway this knight is hiding, so I'm not really wanting to push too much. It's not it's his mistake for hiding. Because I sniped his face right off. Yay. KD KD King. <laughs> uh, always makes me laugh when I get when I get happy about a snipe I've done in PvE and I remember, oh yeah, the ads are just stupid. It's not doing that in P PvP. Of course I'm doing that in PvP. Right, so again, 
when we come out of here, this is we're, we're on the far left hand uh, tunnel. When you come out of here, that's why we need the ogre to go left because we are going right, and that takes you round to the doorway. So this route is the fastest, most efficient way of doing this, bar none. There isn't a faster and more efficient way. This is literally a five minute run on this. So I'll, while I'm waiting for him, I'll, I'll, I'm always under the impression that he's attracted to the light at the doorway. So I move away and try and take the light away. He's gone. And now I'm gonna do a bit of tight wall up flying. Anybody that wants to know how to do that, you just jump melee and boost at the same time so melee then boost real quick and that's this encounter done i will speak to you guys at the start of the next encounter Chamber of Suffering. If there was ever a more apt name for an area in Destiny, I've yet to find it. This is by far the hardest part of this dungeon because of the unpredictable nature of the encounter. So, the encounter goes up, goes like this. You've got this plate that we're on now. You need to step onto it every 20, 30 seconds or however long it is. I never timed it, but there is an audio cue for when it's about to wipe you. You need to keep walking over this plate. You don't have to stay on it too long. You just have to make sure you, it's almost like you cleanse the plate, right? So the second thing is, you've got this uh, buff that's a, that's that's coming up on your, your, your uh, screen called Curse of Suffering. That will go up to 10. You need to slam an orb before that gets to 10, because that's another white mechanic. Now I'm saying that, it's I've never actually been wiped by it, so I don't know, because it takes quite a while to get to 10. So, you, you see that kind of light, kind of, it, it, the plate starts, it looks like the plate starts to change colour, and so does the light, it gets redder and redder. You just need to keep refreshing that. So once you've killed that knight, the knight that gives you the orb, I come over to this right hand pillar, because you get, now you're going to get two other waves of ads. You see I'm getting pushed by the second wave, the second lot, which I'll throw. So you're going to get two boomer knights, and you're going to get a whole host of throw. What I do, because you can keep putting rifts down, you can do that. I have Hive Invigoration on, so when I take down a yellow bar knight, I get my class ability, or a yellow bar enemy, I get my class ability back, and I also have Hive Armaments. Now, I've never used Hive Armaments in a video before. I've had them, I've just never used them, and, I'll, and the reason I've never used them is because I didn't think everybody had access to them. Because at the time, it seemed like they were only dropping from the Heroic. Well, when I knew the dungeon was coming out, I farmed the, the, the Menagerie. I took all three characters through it, so I'd done my Hunter, I think. I'd done three runs on the Hunter, and then my first run on the Titan, I got Hive Armaments from a normal Menagerie. So if I can get them, you guys can get them. Hive Invigoration, Hive Armaments... You need to make sure when you're doing the menagerie that unless you've got year two armor, in which case year three mods don't work, you need to farm some more year three armor so that you can put the hive armaments, the hive invigoration on. We don't need repurposing for this part because repurposing is we break a shield. It's a mod. These are mods you get from the menagerie. You can get them from Crownosaurus as well. Uh, they work with hive so that the repur just for anybody that doesn't know, repurposing is break a shield. Break any shield with a weapon or whatever and get your grenade back. Uh, invigoration is take down an elite enemy to get your class ability back. And Hive Armaments is kills with your grenade. Uh, give you heavy straight into your weapon. So, in an activity where you're going to be on a build. And my build is set up for throwing grenades. Make no mistake about it. Controverse holds. Uh, I don't have... Nobody's seen that grenade. We're not going to speak about that grenade. Let's just forget about it. We're all friends here. Support is what I need right now. I don't need judgment. Come on now. Be fair about it. I had it charged. I was going to throw it at the night. And the throw went, hey. I was like, well, just hold this for me then. Uh, <laughs> it nearly killed me. The 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 idea of this, just to, just to, to you know, making light of that, obviously. But that is a great... Uh, that is a great segue into the being airborne 
is 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 a big thing here, right? Now acolytes are really the, the, so that the, the enemies go in order of acolytes are the most important enemy to kill. Now I'll even put them above the the boomer knights. The boomer knights can create a real problem, but the acolytes they're shooting at you and they're throwing those solar balls. So they are a really important enemy. You need to and and it's this front section, the sec section just about that section there. Don't let them build up there because you'll just be dealing with constant solar solar bombs and ads shooting at you. And as you'll see in this run, I don't actually, I don't actually attack the right side very much, or the left, because the the pillars, these kind of structures, these structures left and right, they kind of provide me with a lot of cover from those sides. If I'm if I I feel like I've cleared the front side and I've cleared the left side, I'll maybe I'll, you know I'll maybe do a bit do a bit of damage on the right hand side. But this front area here, they, there's two sets that spawn there and they have a clear view of you. So that's as you can see. I just take, while I'm looking, I'll I'll take some out. But the, the and and I only take the knight from the left hand side. You don't have to clear the knights from all sides. So just make sure this front area is cleared. Now, I would even go as far as to say clear the front area regardless bef before you take the knight out. And when you get up to the knight, make sure the, you know, because you've got a better angle on it, you can make sure that there's no ads. You could take a few ads from there if needs be. Uh, just make sure before you slam, you go across the plate just to cleanse it. And then hit the hive structure. Now, what will happen is you'll get so involved in this battle, you'll get so focused on what you're doing, the battle will be over before you, you know, you won't be ready for it. And, I, you know, even though I've done a heap of runs on this, and I did, it took me a while to master this. The rest of it, I had a very clear, I had a very clear image of what weapons I was going to use at the boss and my strategy, and I stuck to it. There will be better strategies, and they'll be faster. I mean, I three-phased the boss. There will be faster strategies, but I was just looking for a repeatable strategy. I had a very clear vision about how I was going to do the boss because I completed this in a fire team before I sold it just to get a look at it and to you know help some of my clan get through it and stuff uh, so I got a look at it but this I had no clue how I was going to do this you know I know and I'm going to make a small reference to this I know people on PC I'm not really I don't really care about PC players I don't watch the runs not not I'm not being salty I'm not being it's just it's a different game almost you know, and I know some people have put guides out on this. Hey, look, I play on a PC and I've done this with a controller. Well done. Are you still playing at 230 frames? The game's just different on PC. And and I have, you know, there's no salt involved. You know, I, do, I don't hate PC players. In fact, the, one of the best, the best player in Destiny, for my money, is a PC player. And he played on console to start with and he was still really good. His runs weren't quite as crispy as they are on PC, but he was, he's still, and he's a really nice guy. He's always been very nice to me. So I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be bashing PC players, and that is not what this is. I just want, if you guys play on console, if you play on console and you're looking for a guide, this is it. This guide is it because you guys are playing the same game with the same challenges that I am. So, if, uh, you know, if I can do it, you guys can do it. And the other thing is, I don't watch PC players, PC runs, not players, that's the right way. It's it's not PC players, it's the runs, because you it's on console, I, I'm, I'm like looking at it just kind of, I'm not that type of person that looks at runs and goes, oh my god, you're so good. Because I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> you know, to a degree, that's what I'm doing. So I'm not like looking at it going, oh, I'm, I'm in awe of you. I'm not, I'm not. And I also look at it and go, yeah. Good luck trying to tap that guy. I watched the PC guy doing it, and it was, it, it, you know, it's got to be something I catch him before I'll, 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 and I'm not going to mention any names here because that I'm not. This isn't. Was it the youngins say these days? I'm not commenting for clout. <laughs> not doing that. So, but I did watch a PC guy do it, and he used the hush bow, and I was, I was like, yep, yeah, that's definitely you can't do. You're not doing that in console, but it was impressive what he done. Very impressive. But this this area here, this is it. This is where this is where the dungeon really. This 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 encounter could end up one of those encounters in Destiny that becomes famous just for how unpredictable and how difficult this can be. 
so you can see the ads can push you up here. You just have to be aware. Hit fire a lot. Keep 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 your radar active. You know, if if at all possible, just come out your radar. Don't ads all the time because you're playing with a blindfold on. You know. And if you're doing this the same way I'm doing it, you've got Hive Invigoration on, you've got Hive Armaments, you've got Controverse Holds on, you're set to throw grenades, make sure you throw them. Throw them as often as possible. Get that heavy ammo back. And as I've already said, this encounter, if you keep moving and keep refreshing the plate and slamming the orb and then clearing the front side and using your rifts, this encounter will be over before you're prepared for it to be over. As you can see here, the encounter's over and I'm still getting in position. So that is this encounter over. Now I will add, you shoot this thing in front of you and then you drop down to the next encounter. I never had that part recorded. I stopped the recording here and I forgot to record the actual dropping down. So I will see you guys in the next, the, the start of the next encounter, which is at the bottom of this drop. So guys, this is the next encounter. My apologies for not recording the drop down, but it's literally 10 seconds. You just drop down that hole and you're here. You'll be met with those three sigils and a direction you can go left or right. The idea of this area is to kill three wizards. Once you kill the three wizards, the exit, the exit from this area will open and that is you. So, so I have another question that I, <laughs> that I need to answer myself. How do you make a guide for something that you didn't know how you'd done? <laughs> so I am going to try and find um, I'm, uh, in this in this in, in this video you are going to see the direction I went in but trust me as I was doing this it was like you know oh I see red on my map I'll go that way so but it did seem like left is the better way <laughs> I'm trying to make excuses for myself now I literally just lucked out here and, and managed to get it done pretty quickly so if you follow the direction I go you are going to find all the ads there's none of this oh I've went I've went the wrong way I'll go all the way back to the start I did find I did I did do this a couple of times I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit harsh on myself it's just because when I, when I was doing it I was like I have no clue where I'm going here I will try and find a guide though and uh, a, a map and link it in the description or in the comments so you guys have got better so you can see how good I how well I done or how badly I done but I'm pretty sure that this is you know it's not that this isn't the first time I've done this so I'm pretty sure this is this is a decent way to do it. The only advice I can give you here, the Jotun's really strong here. It's really, really, really strong. It's three shots on the wizards. Be careful. There's a shrieker, which I think I I, I don't I don't actually uh, the directions that I went in I I didn't I didn't come across a shrieker. So maybe this is a good way to go. Uh. So. There's a shrieker at a different point. Now, I've changed my jump at this point. I've took off strafe. I've went for more aerial control so that I can turn corners faster when I'm jumping. I would suggest you guys do that as well. So, basically, you just kind of... If you follow the direction I went in, I think when I do it, I'm pretty close to the, the exit when I finish. So, I think I'm very close to the exit. So, as I, as I said before, remember when I said I don't go anywhere and... Oh no, this isn't the right way. This might have been one of them. I just uh, small detour. I can be forgiven that, guys. Come on, where's the team spirit? So, you j that's the exit right in front of us, and there's two wizards round about left. And you know, you can go. I think it's this way. You go this way, and there's two wizards quite easily access. You know, accessed from this direction. As you can see, I've got the red on my map, and that's why I put on this jump so I could jump round corners and. You know, have more control over my glide. So, I will leave you guys to watch the rest of this encounter. And after we beat this, we are at the boss, guys. So, I'll say this before before I end this this piece of the commentary. Looking at the way I'd done this, I think, I think when I was doing it the first time, because this was actually this was my second solo simply because I found out that something again I haven't mentioned the video up till now to get the solo completion triumph you cannot leave you it's one run it's one and done you have to stay in here till it's done I didn't know that because the shattered throne isn't like that I'm just coming here to get some ammo see if there's anything here I didn't know that so 
the first time I went through it, it, it wasn't quite as good a run as this. So, you know, even from just beating it once, I already became more efficient in here. As soon as I get the flawless done, if I can maybe come up with a different strategy for the chamber of sufferings really where it's going to be at and there's the, there's the next the next area coming up uh the chamber of sufferings really going to be where it's at so don't go over here there's nothing here <laughs> so see when i said I, 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 there, there is a better way to do this i'm looking for lore guys that's what it is between me and you, there's, I know that there's a piece of lore in here. This is the piece of lore I have. I know roughly where it is. I just didn't collect it. That's why the, I haven't included the lore because I'm not one of these people that just I found a piece of lore. It'll be when I find it all. Uh, once I come up with with a different strategy for uh, the chamber suffering, the flawless is on. I'm very confident in the flawless run. So. Hopefully, guys, we'll get a flawless run done soon. Uh, but until then, I will leave you to watch the rest of this encounter and follow my lead, maybe? <laughs> and I will speak to you guys at the boss. Cradle of Damnation, what a beautiful looking area. We finally reached the boss, so just further down is where the where the encounter starts and you rally a flag down here. And now we, we start the boss. Now I had a very clear vision of what, how I wanted to do this. I've changed my weapon setup now. I'm using Love and Death, which is Eris's grenade launcher. I've got it with uh, spike grenades and full court. Full court increases the damage you do depending on how far away you actually pick, actually fire your grenade launcher from and now we're going to be using the the different attacks that we used in the first area so we're going to face those three uh mini bosses again so i'm just using this to clear so what i do is you can go to any side you want so what i'm doing is clearing all the ads and now we're facing our old friend uh the, the broken blade the mate of the broken blade so again block two hits and then as you can see i hit him with a super so just make sure you get your timing right for the two hits and then the block and once he's dead you're going to get an orb now what i do with the orb is you've got to slam it but as you can see our old buddy the boss he's not a buddy i don't like him <laughs> he's standing where we need to slam so I go to the left now using the same skill that I, I, I did it's not skill but same technique I did with the sword I jump boost uh, melee with the the orb which throws me forward and then so I jump melee and boost at the same time you should practice it with a sword it, it allows me it allows me to get to where I need to get to really quickly you know, so I boost to the to the left, so that the boss follows me, and he'll move away from where we need to be. He'll move away from the area we need to slam. I will run past the area I need to slam in. I will run, and 
try and slam as I'm going so that I move slightly away from where I need to be. That was a very lucky snipe. So I'm using Izanagi primary, Love and Thunder is a heavy, and I'm also using uh, an ARC uh, auto rifle. Now the reason that I would normally have used the recluse, but as I've already said in this run, I want to do a run that isn't doesn't. The recluse is such a niche weapon; it's such a good weapon, but I just feel like I had a problem with the recluse in the mountain top. I had a problem with them, but I, I had the recluse pretty quickly, but I didn't go for the mountain top till really late. But I had a problem with them because people were literally just using them all the time because they were so OP. I have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with people using really strong weapons for stuff like this. If you're on your own, if you're on your Jack Jones and you're coming in to do this stuff, then why not use the best weapon for it? So if you didn't watch the first encounter and you knew what to do and you've just come straight to the boss fight, we're using the same attacks for the same enemies. So for this wizard, we're throwing our attack just like the, the exotic void sword, which was name escapes me because I don't use it. But right trigger to throw it, it tracks. So as you can see, I don't I don't need to be properly facing this wizard. I can fire from as long as if you imagine it's like the way that you do it's, uh, inverted spire comes to mind. If you block, if you stay in cover from his, just keep his uh, left hand in cover, so his left hand can't see. You'll shoot the wall because th that's where his attack is. It's kind of similar similar principle to the sword. As long as your right side is, can view the wizard, you don't need to. You, you can actually bend it round round the that's why you can bend it around the wall that's why i do what i do with going left i i was just trying to save a bit of time uh i'm actually trying to remember the name of this bloody auto rifle i can't remember anyone will do the eris's auto rifle any auto rifle it's just for the ads it's just to take out these throw i try and keep honed edge on as much as possible and in between I'll try and clear as many thrall because the thrall don't keep coming back not not in the same numbers so we've got one we've took out the mate of the broken blade we took out the knight we've took out the wizard now it's the 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 shrieker so again just making sure there's no ads lying around what I'll do is I always go to the back because the back's the only area that's not that doesn't have an open to the to the left you know the the back the back I, I've got cover from whatever at boss I'm fighting from the left here because the, the back end is closed up as you can see. So I always go to that. I probably could do it quicker. I said this at the start. If you're looking for a speed run, this possibly isn't the run for you. You know, but you'll, you'll learn what the mechanics are and, you know, easy ways to beat them. So again, left side, jump, just a single jump, not a boosted jump, a single jump, melee, and then... I'll get out of here because he's right in front of me. Uh, and there's a sword knight. The sword, the sword knights patrol areas, so you can actually get, you know, they'll actually they'll actually go out of the way of their area. So no boss damage. So what my plan was, it was a very clear plan, was that I would use something that I could be very mobile with. So that's why I went with a grenade launcher. Also with the grenade launcher, and you'll see me do it more when I'm airborne. I can hit fire. So I can keep an eye on my radar because you're going to have Cursed Thrall coming in here. So, decent boss damage. It could be better. So we'll put an Izanagi on him. And we'll get another one. And I probably can get another. He slammed. So, let's talk a little bit. Now that those mechanics we've done in the first, first wave... They are the mechanics we're going to be doing the whole time. So, take out a knight, go and attack one of the bosses, slam the orb, clear for ads, and rinse and repeat until the three, the three, uh, the three bosses are done. So let's talk a little bit about the boss encounter. So what's going to happen is that you have to be inside his kind of green shield, the green hue on the floor. You have to be inside that to do damage, or you'll be immune, right? So, 
what I do is, as soon as I go in, I get, I get, I make sure that I can actually do damage. As you can see, block, aim at the Shrieker. The Oracle of the Broken Blade. The Broken Blade is the boss we're fighting. I'm, I'm interested because when I was fighting it, I never actually paid attention to what they were called. So, once you're inside that green kind of perimeter, you can do damage. So, I'll put a grenade on him, and then I'll throw a Nova at him. Then, I will empty all my heavy into him. I'm not going to bother with his anami straight away. I'm going to empty all my heavy into him. Just making sure there's no ads at the bottom there. As you can see, the acolytes don't seem to come back. The thrall will come back in various degrees. So once I've emptied my heavy, I keep jumping up because you're going to get exploders. Right? And you have to be very careful. Here come the thrall. You have to be very careful for the exploders because they can end a good run, which is why I try and stay airborne. So once once I've thrown my Nova, I've 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 hit him, hit the I've hit him with a grenade, I've thrown my Nova, so he's gonna take more damage from the Nova. Then I'll make my way round, I'll make my way round, and I'll try and keep that centre kind of spike, kind of spire, little spire thing. I'll keep that between me and him, and that will act as a little bit of cover. Now I think in the third wave I do take some damage. It's not tons. I don't know if it was enough to kill me, but I took I take some damage. That was because I got too aggressive. If you're just looking for the completion and, and, and looking to increase your skill level within this, maybe you've got aspirations, which why shouldn't you, to do it flawlessly, then you want to keep that spire between you and him. He has a couple of attacks. He can fire at, like, fireballs at you. And he does a flaming sword kind of attack. When he goes down on one knee and sticks his sword into the ground, anything that is within the damage perimeter, well, it's a wipe. So the minute you see him go on one knee, he's not going to give you a ring. Okay? It's going to be... You're going to go for sleep. <laughs> you're going to have to do all this again. So again, it's very repeatable very repeatable strategy uh as you can see the thrall now another tool tip is when you're dealing damage to the ads my what i would suggest is clear two areas first and then you can now go on one of those kind of outward sp spikes there's one in between each area you can go into that in the area between the two areas you've just cleared i'm just looking for the hive the night and deal damage if you try and de if you try and clear the ads before you've cleared two areas the ads from this from one of the sides will start shooting at you so it's it's worthwhile to clear ads first if you clear two areas first clear two areas i mean you can do what i'm doing you can use this the pillar pillar uh, these pillars that go all the way around the the inside area you can use them to block from the boss and you can use the sword but if you really want to just, you know, be careful and, and, you know, that's what to do. Clear two areas and then you can find find one of the areas between the two areas you've cleared and just fight off all the... the if you can get that, the, the thrall to chase you into that area, you can just do that. So we're back back with the, the might of the Broken Blade. Now the other thing I've noticed as well, you're going to use all your heavy each time. I was I, I was never struggling in any attempt I had I never struggled to get to get heavy back there was always tons of heavy lying about so don't worry about uh, ammunition you are gonna get and I've got nothing nothing helps me I don't have any you know anything to help me get that at any ammo for any weapon it just drops so we pick up the orb jump melee boost and then boost again there we boost there just to move the boss and now we're going to go and slam and get ready for DPS on the boss so as soon as we slam you see this green kind of perimeter Th make sure you're not facing him because his attack's going to hurt you and there we go we just this time we've done it differently I've saved my super now I possibly you'll notice at the end of this DPS you see that attack how much damage it done it, he, he'll just throw it in a straight line at you. Just make sure you get off all your heavy. 
Now, I, I possibly didn't do the damage I did in the first one because I changed my routine. So we'll get another, another Izanami. As you can see, when he puts his sword down, that's you, you that's your cue to get out of there. And now we've got all these exploders. So we'll take out a sword knight. And as I said, we'll take out an area. And then that, that frees up frees up a little bit of... Uh, is it, it, it doesn't matter which area you go for, but I always do the same things, like I said. I charge a, I'll charge a grenade, put it in, you'll see all the numbers. Takes out a heap of the enemies that are in there. And now we're at the wizard. So, rinse and repeat. All you're going to do is just keep using that RT attack. Throw, throw, on the, throw on the green stuff. And it really does kind of, you know... If I just move in a little bit, I can nip out. I don't have to nip out, but I can just nip out and throw it. As long as it, you know the shot's going to go round the corner. With these stairs as well, because you can see I'm throwing it from... I'm, if you get too close to the stairs, you'll actually hit the top of the stairs. So I try and move back after every throw. So I'm still throwing from the same place. And as, there you go. There's the, there's the proof. How much heavy drops... We've already got half war requirement back. So I think I'm not, I'm, I'm undecided. I, th I think this might actually be a more enjoyable uh, dungeon than Shattered Throne. But I think Shattered Throne had more about it. I think I think it was definitely more, more challenging. But the boss wasn't. I don't. I think. I think this boss is a lot simpler than, than Shattered Throne. Once I got to the boss, I, you know, the the goal will be to one phase the boss. That will be the goal. Try and get try and get the one phase on the boss. So we're just going round here, just, you know, trying trying to get a def, decent decent look at the a sword knight. There's one right behind me, so I'll just move away. But these are the guys. I'm trying to give myself a clean kind of a clean area, a clean, a clean rotation without having exploders everywhere. Now, again, I, I've already said this, and I'll say it again. What you, if you've got the recluse in this area, the recluse would be much better. He got too close to me. I, I never managed to get the the honed edge on him. We did this time. And now we'll go and take out a second area. So this is the the hive knight, the mate of the broken sword. Again, we'll just throw throw a grenade in there and allow the grenade to do its job. Clear out most of the ads. So it's just me and him. If there is another ad like there is there, I'll just break from the combat and just but I'll do a rotation because the knight will follow you outside. So you don't want to turn around and be hit straight away. Wrong attack. <laughs> so just... And the other thing is, if you do go past him with your attack, I'll just get my super off on him. If you go past him and you're facing the wrong way when he hits you, it doesn't matter if you block. It only blocks the direction. Now, this was really weird. See how he, he broke out of his animation there? It was really strange. He just kind of stood there. You can only do damage when his shield isn't up. And it's, when he's almost dead, you'll break his shield. Now, we're, we're hoping we're going to finish him here. I, the goal is, eventually, to do him faster. To get him finished faster. But for a completion, this is, this is a really good method. Is, is to just, you know... Throw your grenade. If you've got, if you're on a Titan, you've got weapons of light. Then that that will make up for, you know, over the piece will make up for not having, not having the grenade. But you still can do the grenade thing with the Titan. You know, I I use uh, Void Wall, and it's really good. It does the same kind of thing. It just the grenade itself possibly doesn't do as much damage as the Warlock grenade. So now we're on to the Shrieker, which we're going to block. Charge a grenade, throw a bad grenade. But you can see the, 
the range and all the ads explode so what i done was there's still ads up i just it will block the shots from the ads if you were going for a faster completion as long as you're blocking you can see i'm getting stuff shot at me i'm getting stuff thrown at me as long as i'm blocking and they're all in front of me i'm good and and it kind of by the looks of things it deflected them as well it deflected the attack so there's maybe something you know to look forward looking forward that might be something that we can we can utilize going forward will it block attacks something maybe with more testing we'll find out if that if that has another application so we'll slam this orb and then straight into dps grenade and then super and now we'll burn off with heavy on them and i think this was a, it was a clutch finish now that not it shouldn't have been a clutch finish i had to disengage because of that night it shouldn't have been a clutch finish but i think it was i think he was getting ready to end the encounter getting ready for the wipe and i managed to get an aggie on his face and that this was i I, try, I had to reload cancel a couple of times and there we go there's the completion and there's the triumph complete the pit of heresy solo thank you for watching the video guys i hope this does help some of you guys get through this and maybe after watching this you could see see what you would do differently or what you would use that i've done I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do, a like rating is always appreciated. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys in the next video.